continuing to celebrate your presence, Almighty God. How wonderful it is that you have chosen us to bring forth praises, thanksgiving, worship, adoration to you this morning. We sing from our hearts, we express them, Lord, to you. We are so grateful. We are amazed. And we wonder again and again how you should love us so much. How you should come down in our midst. How your spirit yearns for us, longing for our hearts and our minds and our souls to express the love and worship, adoration, and blessings to you. Thank you, Almighty God. We praise you. We worship you. We thank you. And we wait for you to fill us with yourself, with your love, with all that you are, all the blessings you want us. We thank you. You are amazing, Lord. And we want to express our love to you this morning. Thank you. In Jesus' mighty and worthy name we pray. Amen. Before we start, it's been a wonderful, wonderful time of worship. We feel the Lord's presence, and we also continue in that spirit of worship to have a declaration for each one of us to declare before the Lord. Shall we rise up as we meaningfully express it to the Lord, not to your friend, not to us, not to Logos, but to God himself. Okay, let's start. Today, Today I will listen to God's word. It will not return to him empty, but it will accomplish what he desires in my life and achieve the purpose which was sent to me. In Jesus' name, Amen. Jesus. Uh, it's wonderful to be blessed, and I feel blessed to stand before you also. I want to thank God for this opportunity as we think of the great emphasis that is on the mission statement of Logos. One of the word that is mentioned is empowerment, to empower people. But we are considering empowering from God empowerment. So we'll continue to meditate on these words this month on power and on the anniversary we'll have a climax. Um, Pastor Alan Ganon will bring the message on empower, empowerment. Okay, we have a few verses to consider. Power. In Tagalog you have just one word it seems. But in the Hebrew, it has more than 21 words, believe it or not. Because it expresses power from God's point of view, evil forces, demons, people, kings, all kinds. And each one has a power which has a different Hebrew connotation. But in Tagalog, all is kapangyarihan. Is it? and all the forms of that. And in Greek, it uses three main words. There are two or three others. So when we use the word power, English is not enough. So if you're learning English to learn the Bible, then maybe you, you are more serious. Why don't you learn Hebrew? Okay, or Greek. Because if you want to know deeper God's word, Ecclesian and Christo people, when we had 
discussions and debates when we were in the Philippines. They used different translations of the English, which is quite good, but they don't have the Greek and Hebrew background. So they have a handicap, they have a weakness in that. And therefore, if you learn these words, even just read it, you don't have to master the language. You must, as you read to a concordance, you will see these words have different meanings, different interpretations. And it will help you to learn God's word in depth. And so today, we are going to consider a few verses of in power. Let's first, our verse is from 1 Timothy 1, 7 and 8. And Paul, the Apostle Paul tells Timothy, a young man, maybe a teenager, who is willing to serve God, God had called him. And he says, let no one despise your youth, and so on. And then, because God has given us not the spirit of timidity, not to fear, not to be nervous, but a spirit of power he has given us. That's empowerment. He has given us. And then the same word, power, is used in Philippians. That I may know him and the power of his resurrection. We don't know that power. We just sing uh, the song just now, mountains bow down and the seas will roll at the sound of your name. Now, that is powerful enough for us on earth. That's the greatest power that we can think of. Maybe earthquakes that can be, not be controlled by science or wisdom of men and what they have found in technology. But when we think of God's power, it is not just this small little planet Earth. It's the galaxies, the heavenly spheres. And every time, they want to express the power, the glory, the characteristics, the attributes of God. They go up to the heavens because that's where you find power. Science knows that. Power beyond power. How the earth just goes around the sun. And if the sun exploded, what will happen? And there are many suns that are exploding in the galaxies larger, bigger than our sun, and they release great, great power, which even science cannot measure or understand. That kind of power. We are mystified by earthquakes, where it will strike. We only know the Filipino trench, Philippine trench, rather, and then that all those things collide. And when they, when they collide, we don't know. Why they collide, we know a little. What happens when they collide? And that's where calamity begins. The seas will roll at the sound of his name. Power. And God is the author, the maker, the creator of all. And he knows every single planet by name, Isaiah chapter 40, Isaiah chapter 42 says that. That is the power we're talking about from God's point of view. Who God is. Power that we cannot understand beyond our imagination. Power of resurrection. Death coming into life. Now in the Greek, power, dunamis, uh, of course, You've heard this again and again. The word dynamite comes from that. You all know dynamite. Dynamite is powerful. That's how they measure hydrogen bombs, to the power of dynamite, how many, in comparison. Okay, now, the word dunamis in Greek is a word that is used in Greek for many, many kinds of power. There's another one. Matthew 28, 18, King James Version 
authorized voice and say, all power is given unto me. And then we read in the international version, it is not, it doesn't use the same word, power. That's the King James Version. In the international version, you find all authority is given to you in heaven and on earth. So the word is different again. But it still has a connection with God's power. The authority to exercise the power and to give it and to anoint other people with that power, to use that power. That's empowerment. What has God given us that we are still so weak, we are still so human, and we do not understand God's power? Okay, let's have a definition. Simple definition. Definition about power for the believer. Next one. Empowerment of the believer. Granting of power, the right and authority to perform or do something according to the divine will of the sovereign and loving God. It doesn't mean power, you just use it, release it in any way you like. If it is from God, it will be according to his sovereign will and according to his loving nature. It will be expressed in love. And this is where he is going to empower his church, his people, with his power. I think that we agree. Amen? So we have the power, we can say. It's different from woman empowerment or child empower and all kinds of political slogans. And the idea is still there. Giving of recognition, use, and power authority to exercise their God-given rights. So there is dignity, there is respect and honor. But in Christ, that power is, that will fit according to the sovereign God, the Almighty One, and at the same time expressed through His love. Okay, I think that is why. Where do we find this power? Who gives this kind of power? It's God who gives us. And we're going to consider a little again this power because we read in Revelation, powers were given to angels, Hades and death, angels, to destroy people. Angels are given power. Uh, Revelation chapter 6 and also Revelation chapter 2. Authority over nations. Now, this is the only place where we find directly in vision that John saw giving of power to these angelic powerful forces. It could be one angel, it could be a host of angels under the command of this big angel. The angels of death and hell. But here we read also uh, in Romans 6, 4, we were buried him in baptism into death. Just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, by the power of the Father, so that we too may have a new life. Do you have a new life? Because of Jesus, because he died and rose again, we have that gift through his grace to have new life in us. It's a total, totally new radical change. A transformation happens in our life. If it has not happened, maybe you're not born again. If you're still the same, you think in the same way, you do the same things, you fall into the same temptations again and again, maybe you're not transformed. Look again. We need to be transformed through the power of the believing the power of his resurrection 
through the power of his love, because his love draws us to himself. And through all that, we, he gives us a gift of new life. So, I'm addressing to you, assuming that all of you have new life. Some may be evident, some express it boldly, some may be very quietly. They don't shout loud, but still, they are changed and so on. And so, we have this, I think, Romans 6 4 talks about that new life, and in Peter, he has given us his divine power. Where that, uh, his divine power has granted us all things and called us to his own glory and excellence. I think this is where we have been called. Meaning, called for what? So that we can have the power to live the new life. So that we may see and glorify God. And this is why it is God's grace, through God's grace, that that empowerment comes. No other reason. God in his love had this plan. Through his mercy, through his power of love, through his grace, we find he has expressed us this, imparting to us his power, divine power to us as a church. And so we speak of his divine power. He has counted us worthy. He has counted us those people who should receive, you and I. I don't know why. Do we deserve it? We don't. But somehow, God thinks we deserve it. Because without God, we are nothing. We are but dust. No hope, no meaning, no purpose. But with God, brings the honor, the glory, the purpose, not just on this earth, but for all eternity. Okay, let's have something else. The next one, I want to repeat that again because of God's grace. Empowerment comes to the amazing grace of God. Is it boring? Are you still sleepy? I see no one sleeping. Okay, fine. <laughs> I am going to go a bit long on this. Ephesians chapter 1, chapter 2, chapter 3. That is homework. Okay. Uh, it's a book that I've been reading again and again, and I find it so amazing. And I find in that God has chosen us all under grace, not because we're handsome, gifted, and worthy. No. Because we're sinful, helpless, hopeless. That is why he came to redeem, to save us, to change us. So he chose us, it says, and he created us in the beloved. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 1 to 4, you continue reading. And he chose us even before creation, meaning he planned all this. In all his big diagram of the universe and the history of nations, from eternity he had planned this. Even before he created the universe, maybe the stars, even before the stars existed, you were there in his plan. Um, it's hard to believe. It's amazing how God knew, planned, and used his sovereign power to execute his plans, his program. And we are included in that. You are important in that sense, from God's point of view. He has a plan and purpose. So you can't just say, I have nothing to do, I'm nothing. You are something. And God has made you into something important. Amen. Ephesians 1, 2, and 3 will bring that. You are created, loved, and saved. Okay. All that combined. It is not that you don't know. It is something that you know. 
you've heard it, you've read it, but it's something you need to experience that also. And when you experience the gushing power comes. So here we find he was free, chosen, love that surpasses knowledge. We find in Philippians, I think. And uh, 319. And Ephesians. And we are blessed. We become his family member and we are in, included in him to receive that important blessing. And so the next empowerment comes God's grace and let's add something else also. We'll try to hit this in different angles. That's the way Paul does that. Paul tries to mention the truth of God's great salvation plan in different means and ways. How the, uh, the Jews would understand, how the Greeks would understand, how the Gentiles would understand in different angles. He'll bring that. So we are to see which one, because it is not just one simple dot. Okay, this is it. Because it's like a huge, huge diamond. And it shows up its rays in different angles, different directions. And you find the glory, the beauty of it from different angles. God's truth is like that. It cannot be fully fathomed. But we can admire it, we can glory in this. So we are, apart from God's amazing grace of God, we will be included. Next, I would like to mention, because of this, he has given us a privileged position in Christ. You are given a great position in Christ. Amen? Amen. If you really believe, your life uh, will continue to transform in a greater speed. Okay. Colossians chapter 3 is my favorite chapter. That's why I'm singling out Ephesians 1, 2, and 3, chapter 3 again. Because I was blessed through these uh, verses. I was blessed in my Christian life, in my early Christian life, and I saw from as I read this, I memorized it, and I use it whenever I face problems, difficulties, doubts, temptations, and I tend to know Colossians 3 must be one of the reasons God empowers me to live a life for Him. Colossians 3, we are seated at the right hand of God. Where is God? We think in terms of the throne of God. That's all in the way we human beings express the greatness, the glory, the majesty of God. Here on the throne, we don't know what kind, we don't know how big, how large. It may not be a throne, but wherever God is, He rules. And He rules all the time with sovereign grace and love. And this is where we are also seated. Why can we say we're seated? Because our Redeemer, the one who bought us, the one who saved us, our representative, our high priest, He is there before the throne of God. And He represents us. So spiritually, we are there in God's presence. I think this is a secret that we need to meditate more and more to realize we are in God's presence. Or let's put it the other way. God is present with me. Amen? Wherever I am, God is present. There's no way you can hide from God. You, see, you might say, okay, if I sin with God be any, God is there. God is there uh, wherever you go, whether you're working, we're talking, in your thinking, in your dreaming, everywhere he's there. If you go to the library, he's there. If you go 
sightseeing is there, in the bus or in the train. He is there all the time. And we are in his presence. That consciousness, that relationship. The more we are conscious of that, the more our lives are going to be empowered. Amen? If you are in his presence, will you be thinking of sin? Remember, God is holy. Most holy God. If God is present with you, will you sin? Will you be thinking of doing wrong things? Will you be thinking of offending your brother? You, will you be thinking of saying bad things, dismiss to our another brother or sister? I don't think so. If God is present with you. I remember one story. Now, missionary team was going to China in the olden days before communists came. And in that village that they went very old, uh, a bit dirty, uh, like most old villages are. And there was one, only one Christian in that village. It was an old woman. And the missionaries came and she gave all the team a place to stay and she cooked food for them. But she was the one recognized as a Christian in the, in the village. But one thing about they were so grateful about everything. A lone witness in one small village in China. And one thing they were a bit disappointed was this old lady was a continuous chain smoking lady. I don't know if you smoke or not. That's not my problem, that's your problem. Okay. okay. And this woman's problem was chain smoking. She couldn't stop smoking. And so this team were a bit disappointed because they had some kind of ethical teaching that you should not smoke, you should not drink, you should not do this, 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 this if you are a Christian. But here they saw this old lady, exceptional witnessing Christian, but one thing, she smoked. Old lady. And you can't tell old lady to stop smoking. And so they left. After a few months, the team passed through this village again. And the same lady, along with other group members, came and gave them the hospitality they needed. But one thing they noticed, she had stopped smoking. And they said, hallelujah, to themselves, of course. And when the woman stopped smoking, they saw that, they asked her, how come? Before, you were a chain smoker. We were a bit disappointed and we didn't like the smell of tobacco. Uh, she told them a story. She said, whenever I do anything, the Lord Jesus is with me. And I know he's present with me and I'm present with him. He's in my presence all the time. When I eat food, I ask the Lord Jesus to share and I eat with him. Of course, he does not eat, but I offered him my cigarette because I smoke after I eat. Uh, I realized that he didn't like the cigarette. He didn't like it to smoke. So little by little, I realized I did not want to displease him. And so little by little, I realized if I'm in his presence and he doesn't like it, I will stop. So I tried to stop. And eventually, I was able to stop. And I think that's what in his presence means. In his presence, I only do the things that will please him. I will consider in my thoughts, in my work, in my understanding, in, even in my motives, anything that will please him because he's there. Amen? And that is going to give you power in his presence. Realize his presence. And the more you realize he's present with you today, anywhere, everywhere, that is the power. Empowerment. You're empowered to live for him. That's what he's planned for us. So we are in that privileged position. 
at the right hand of God, we are seated. We have been raised with him in baptism. We have died with him and we are raised with him. Now we are seated with him. And, you're, and it says in Colossians chapter 2, your life is hid with Christ in God. Your life in Christ is him. In him. It's a double prison. I was wondering, there was one preacher who said, he brought a small article. Your life is hid and he put in God's hand. In God. In God's mighty hand. Who can touch you in that mighty hand? No power that you ever knew can touch you. And then he added, if you know God's presence, you are in his hand. You have no right to be afraid of evil spirits and superstition. It's not easy for Filipinos. It's not easy for these Taiwanese too. Because the Taiwanese worship all kinds of spirits, any spirit. 